if I have something I have to give up, either have a cancer in my life where I'm going to die or give up sex, man, that's, that's, that's a gimme. Dr. Bentley said he let me know in three or four days when they sent the biopsies out to, to be checked. Well, after four days when they tell you that and, and you don't get an answer, then you, then you kind of start to worry. I actually was the one that got the call from Dr. Bentley that we had a positive on one of the specimens. And it was very, very small, 5% of this little itty bitty sliver. We set up an appointment to, okay, let's see what your alternatives are. Let me explain it more to you. The one was uh, wait and see. We're gonna, we're gonna go at this. We're gonna check it every three months and see if your PSA level goes up. If it, uh, if it doesn't, hey, we'll just, just keep checking it and checking it and see how it goes. Maybe nothing will ever happen out of all this. As Dr. Canterbury had told Mike, you know, this is something that you'll definitely die with, but you may not die from. Uh, we pro we could have gone on forever and never ha had a, another problem, but there's always that chance. There's always a chance of a metastasis somewhere else that's not found until it's well established. I chose the prostatectomy simply because I thought that would that was going to be my best way to go in dealing with getting rid of the cancer for good. That's what I thought would be the best. He wouldn't be happy knowing that there was some foreign entity that had invaded his body. It was, it was just a, a foregone conclusion when I heard the news that he would be having surgery. My main concern was, was recuperation. The main thing to begin with uh, is the incontinence. Mike is a very active person. He's also a very determined person. It was probably about three or four months when I didn't use the, I, I no longer used the, the catheter and I just started wearing the pad. There are a lot of things that if he doesn't, isn't able to conquer, he becomes frustrated with and I was hoping that that would not be one of them. But he handled everything very, very well. It'll be a year next month on the 9th and I've worked down to where I was down to one pad. You have to wear a pad because there are sometimes when you'll lift up something heavy, uh, there was something maybe you'll move the wrong way and you'll, you'll squirt a little, do something like that. I didn't worry anything about er the erectile dysfunction at that point because there was just no desire for any sexual relationships at that point. One of my concerns that we would lose that intimacy, but we did not. You don't have to be sexual to be intimate. The medication for that, the Cialis, the Viag Viagra that they have, uh, those do work. Just holding each other can be very, very sexy. But once you get more in the mood when you're close to your loved one, it, you know, it, it, it all comes around to the natural way. We don't let it stop us from doing anything. We've gone on vacations, we take trips, you just, you pack a little extra and you make room for it. I went back to work too early. I could have, uh, I could have stayed off longer. Uh, I had the sick leave, I had the time to do it, but it was just my own doing. I wanted to go back to work. I went back to work after, after six weeks. It hasn't really affected our life other than we've had peace of mind. All the PSAs have come back less than detectable, which is about as good as you can get. And I think the peace of mind is worth everything.